Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, now I will show you why your and everything here community, but it's valid for any open source project or company project this time, because there are rules to improve the quality of your uh, project for your user slash customer. So let's go. Uh, I am Daniel Schiaffratte from Italy. I work in a web agen my web agency. I am very involved with Mozilla, especially with my community, in the Italian one, and uh, like the t-shirt, but I am also a work cross code reboot. I've done patch, I'm a developer, I develop plugin, I am a PTA for Italy, and I'm, I developed a few tools for localizer for WordPress. And uh, when, uh, um, an years ago, a year ago, my community asked for an browser extension for a localizer, I said, why not? And now I will show you what I learned, what also I studied to improve the quality of glossary. So, first of all, we need to talk about langu language learning issues because the job of a polyglot, you need to speak different languages that are not yours. So, when you have to translate, you can find many problems. So, when I, I think, how, how can I explain how much is difficult to talk a language that is not yours? As an example for me, is this one because it me memes for me was like meme because in Italian we pronounce it that way. But uh, I learned later that is the right one is meme. But this is a stupid example. But in these days in Paris, I was like Mr. Bean here, that is say uh, that is speaking French, but it's not true because uh, replying Spanish at the hand for say merci and say gracias. So the problem is that when you have to work with the language is not your, your you have many problems. This is true. So how can you manage this kind of problem? Well, because this is not only a problem of language. Because I say there was an example of the Italian, we can talk, uh, there is people that say that you can talk uh, in Italy without talking, because you can talk only with gesture. So there is not only a problem of language, but also of uh, culture. And this is not only a problem of culture in that way, as an example of gesture, but again, in Italy, we have also the culture, the case of food. Every region has food, uh, um, uh, meal, etc., and different uh, uh, way of thinking on many things. So there are many problems on translation. So a few uh, data from WordPress itself. WordPress is translated now in 72 languages with 160 locals. What are locals? Locals means that, uh, as an example for French, uh, yeah, you have uh, different locals because there is French of Canada, there is French uh, of different country of Africa, etc. But it is the same language with different terms. And this is important. So as a, also again, as an example for Italian, you have Italian and Switzerland Italian. So there are different languages, and maybe you can think it's the same. No, because they have different, as again, culture issues, etc. So I added also as an example Firefox and Mozilla that have 93 languages. So as we can see that uh, it's very common that in open source there is a support of many languages and often very uh, unknown languages that are not very often used. As an example, in Firefox, there are the, it's translated in specific languages like dead for Africa. Be why this? Because uh, the problem of a software, you have to um, reach out the most mainly customers, users. And what is the, uh, the best way? We use the software in their language. Because I think that here, uh, many people, when they say that it's available, your language, you don't set it. As an example, this day I tried to use the ATM machine for tickets in Paris. I saw the Italian translation. I said, OK, I'm not sure to use the English because maybe it can be worse. So it's, it's the first need of a user is to use a software or anything in their language. So in that way, you can, uh, the user feel that is a, a, comfort, a comfortable place like also for the language when you have problems like me. OK, so what is the story of this talk? Because this is the second edition. This is started when I started to develop this browser extension that I'll talk later. At the time, we had, a year ago, 24 official glossary and three that are not like very official. 
This is on Translate WordPress. Now, in the time, I done a talk on the Global WordPress Translation Day you know, in the Italian World Camp about it. I showed also this talk, the Mozilla Festival in London, a month ago in Tirana, and I done also the second edition survey. And now we have 36 a glossary. There is also one about emoji. I don't know, okay. And two that are not official. So we see in a year there was an, uh, uh, the number of official glossary is, is changed a little bit. Not so much, but it's changed. And, and so I'm not sure it's for me because I don't talk or tool, but I know people that added the glossary of their community because they find the survey or because they see the extension, they created a glossary. And in this talk, we see the feedback of the community. The first edition, I done a survey, a publisher don't make WordPress, and I got it 25 participants of different locals. As we can see, there are many Italian because they are friends, so they want to give their opinion, but also of different locals. But uh, a year later, the numbers are quite different, 33, and uh, I tried a different approach. I contacted people personally on Slack for, uh, to different GTA in different languages to get new information because I had new question and I got 20 language, different languages. This time, I got many people of different locals. Also, the same language, but different locals. And this was important. Why? Now we will see. But now it's, quest, it's time for question of the audience. How many here are English native speaker? Only one. OK. And here, uh, for, raise your hands for people that speak at least two languages. Three, four, it's only, ah, okay, there are people that talk four languages, okay. So we know there are many differences when you have to think. As often, it's very common when you talk with people that you confuse words. Uh, you are talking Italian with the French Italian. You talk with an English guy and you talk, continue to talk in Italian with him. It's often, it's happen very often. And this is a problem. And this, we can see this problem also on localization. So. Now, uh, I am involved in many open source projects, also at Localizer, but also as a contributor. Transifex, uh, GitHub, um, in the past, many. So now is, uh, it's time to ask, how many of you localize a project in a community? Oh, if, that we, if we have a plugin and we maintain documentation in four languages, mm. that Yeah, OK, yes, yes. To understand, there are people that join a community for localization. And in that way, we can see that there are problems that are very common to all the localizer. This talk is to understand and how we can approach this kind of problem. I think that this question is very easy to say, all of here use WordPress. But an, internet, uh, an important point is that we actually have on Translate WordPress 10,000 translators. And the 47, this is the statistics of WordPress.org, don't use the local English USA. So it means that the half of the 29% of web WordPress website are not using the website in English for USA. It means, I probably, because we don't have number, we have only percentage. This is a problem for me. But we, I think that we have millions of websites that are not in English. So this is important, the quality of the translation. So. I asked to the sur in the survey this question. How many of you use an official glossary for your language, of course? Last year, I saw, I got, uh, in green there will be the last year, in black the new one. We see that the number is not so much changed, but we know that we see that these uh, people use the official glossary. And uh, I discovered the last year that to help, don't use the glossary during the translation. So why you have the glossary and you are not using? Why? Now, the things have changed. And this is important to see because we now, we know that they're using the glossary. So it's not time lose. And at the same time, we have also say that we see the people that use their personal glossary. This number is not changed so much. And this is, uh, for me, is a problem because why you have a personal glossary that you share with your community? Because uh, 
you work in a community. The plugin, the project that you're translating, will be translated also from other people. So maybe the translation will be not the same. So this is important to use the same glossary. So I ask it again. Your community have translation rules? They said yes. But one doesn't know. One say that is not strictly. One doesn't use the community rules. OK. Two have also their own. OK. So what we can learn of these two questions? We see that this glossary is a tool because people say to me that they have rules because they can, we can, they can ignore that question. So for, the, for them, the, tool, the glossary is a very useful tool, but only if really use it. Because for ones that say to me that it's not strictly, is useless. It's like to have a warning, don't open the door, and everyone open the door. It's the same thing. So this important the glossary strictly. For the reason, in the Italian community, we improve the quality of translation, rejecting all the wrong translation. We don't, fi we don't fix them. Maybe only for a single type, type as an example, because often happen that, as an example for me, that uh, I have the 60,000 of strings in less of three months, I think. People that reach me on different social networks because they say that I translated, but it's not true because I only fix a typo. But for GlotPress, I translated a new string, but I fixed the only translation of another one. So we have you use the rule that glossary is strictly. In the case that we are not following, reject it. Because we need to educate our translator. So now we see that the glossary is an important tool, but where to start? will be also a uh, workshop today in the afternoon about how to create a glossary for your community. But uh, the experience of the Italian community the last year when we started it was to ask to our volunteer, the translate, to suggest new terms. Because they are translating, and they have a question, of course, where can I translate uh, um, trash? Because trash, we know in uh, ET world, is the trash bin. But for Italian, they translated as garbage in different way, uh, because there are different cultures. So the bro in this, sometimes I saw the dialect one version of this term, not poor Italian. So it's important, again, to see this kind of thing. So we ask it to our volunteers, when they have problem, reach the community. This is important. The community exists. Why not reach them? So we ask it to get new terms. In that way, they can become involved. Uh, or the other option for community start from a glossary of another community. Why not? Maybe, again, as a, the Italian one is born after uh, copying the Mozilla Italia glossary and changing, well, removing the stuff that we don't need and adding new term. It's a starting point. It's open source. We can do it. So the second point is start to discuss term because there is no dictator that say we translate in that way. No. You need to discuss with your community because they probably are also users of tools that have this term and discuss what is the best term. In that way, you create a community of uh, localizers. In that way, in the Italian one, we can organize online a day of translation, meetup, etc., with people that reach out on Slack without saying to them, hey, we are on Slack. So we create a, a mindset on the people that when we have a term, we is public on our Make WordPress uh, Italian website, and people can discuss us Slack. We have meek, weekly meetings, and we get involved people. And this is important. And that way, the people see that they can create the rules that all the community use, because the glossary is only a big part of localization. So when I try to find the horrible translation, I start with Italian because uh, it's not like French that people don't want to speak English. In Italy, people think they, that they can speak English, but it's not true. And this is a real example. It's Google is very uh, easy to find many of them. Uh, and this is true, because I find that there are, it's famous Italy for this kind of thing. So there are terms that create problems. In, that, in the, this example, we see that uh, in, Ita in Italian, sun is the sun, of course, but the term is sole. Sole is also for mean one or alone one. So they translated probably with translate Google 
and Google cannot understand the context. So they translate it our way. But also, motor for us is the motorcycle. And by this mean also uh, movement, uh, um, action. So this is a crappy translation. So we have to know that there are terms in every language. This is an example. I think that all the languages have this kind of problem. And we have to simplify to our translator that there are terms that they have to translate in a specific way. So usually I ask, uh, uh, they ask it about what are the terms to, in the survey that create problem for your language. So this is a little list. I create a past bin because it's a U, it's, there are 100 terms. So. And uh, we can see that the terms that create problems in the case of WordPress world are a specific ITZY term. They can have a right translation. So uh, this is a list that you can copy because is, we will see. And we can see, as an example, widget is a problem. Slug, a permalink, hook, term, plugin, hover, header, and there are many others. So, and we can see that when there are, these are different people in different languages that report that slug create problem in, the, in 11 different languages. So we, this is a problem. So what we can do now that we have this list is starting point, because uh, the majority of all languages have this problem, probably also your. So you can copy. For that reason, I published all the results. So you can start with this term. And uh, um, what is also the approach for this term? Because we saw that there are specific for ET, Word, and WordPress. The right way depends of your language, of course. Leave them in English, because that way they became technical term. And the people, when they see, oh, it's in English, OK, it's not for me. And then oh, I have not to touch these settings, as an example. Or translate in case you have uh, something that explains what it means, because there are a technical meaning. So a term like blacklist is not a, be a word to explain in your language, because we have to explain the concept. So I start another point, because I say, I think there are terms, not only in the world, they are very difficult to translate. So I find many graphics about it. And uh, I, I learned a lot, because I find that we have a specific term in Italy, that is a biocco. That means the sleepiness that follows an hard meal. And say people of the car, they say, only Italian can have this problem. <laughs> this is true, but there are other, also many other terms that you probably, I think this one in Inuit, the frustration of waiting for something in a queue, I think it is very common. So there are terms that you have no need to translate because you already know. But we have to know that you, have, you don't need to translate. I think also the pie, I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce the pie. Uh, OK. <laughs> so there are many terms that you have, like spam, as an example, is the most common. Spam is a brand of uh, something. So you cannot have to translate, but you need to know what it is. So this is important because it happens in every project. So what are the terms that you cannot translate? Again, are the same. Are always, again, technical term. And this is important to notice this fact, because they're all technical term. Because probably in the new language, you don't have uh, alternative of these terms, because they are pretty new, like selfie. You have no translation, because it's pretty new, probably. So you have to focus on this. So again, what you can do with this list? Starting to think that there are terms that you cannot translate, because often in uh, uh, the localization community, there is people that want to translate everything. They don't care, we need to translate. But you cannot translate because people not understand. And when you have to translate a project, we have to think that all the um, people will use the software, or different background, skills, etc. So you need that your software, project, whatever, need to be understandable from everyone. So also, you have to choose. Technical term, we don't translate. OK, all the community knows, so you can reject people that when you don't translate. So this is important to have this kind of rule. So also I asked, what are the stuff on, in the WordPress world that you don't translate? Because it happened. So we see the stuff 
of settings. The page on uh, WordPress.org that are very high update, like codecs and documentation. Why you need to translate? Because probably you translate now after three hours, you translate too many pages, and the next day uh, exit the new version of WordPress, change everything. You have to start again. Also, the change log because it's for technical people. Technical people know English, so who cares? Also, the license is useless to translate. People don't read them. So, <laughs> Also, name of plugins, or because I saw people translate names of plugins, people searched the English names and didn't find it. So you have also to check this fact. Critical error, because it's R for technical people. You translate in, in, uh, in your language, probably on Google, you didn't find anything. And resources for people like GTE, and other kind of people is important to translate because of this reason. And people report to me they are difficult to approach sometimes because to approach you need to be also technical, but it's another fact. So we see that we can pro add priority on our stuff to translate. It's very important because we know there are, uh, I saw 52,000 plugins, means that there are 52,000 projects to translate. And we can prioritize the stuff to translate. It's important because we can focus on what we need to do. But we need not forget that there are technical terms that are the kryptonite. I think that was the best term to explain. No, it's a bad area, alert, not translating them. You will sleep be better, etc. Also, it will be an happen that in your community we will start a long discussion. How can I translate this term? will be an happen, but I think it is very important because it uh, means that the people care about this volunteering, this activity. Because when you are a big community that do, is not discussing, it's not good for the health of the community. Also, in that way, with these two rules, we can also plan what we have to do, define our priorities. Also, for projects to do. So, for example, for Italy, we chose a codex, we don't translate it. We can focus on plugin in that way. And we don't need skilled people to translate documentation. I, as an example, in the Mozilla Italian community, we stopped to translate the Mozilla developer network because we saw people that translated the HTML tag because they don't know that it's a, a term that you need to translate. It's code. They translated the code because they're the English term. So it's better, bad area to enter. Next, define the terms, but not only because I find it. OK, but also for area. In that way, you can prioritize again. And as an example, I've written here developers' features, but you can also start from e commerce, uh, a blog. In that way, you can create also team that work on this specific term. In that way, different plugins have the same terms. It is important. And start of this point that you have to accept that you have terms that you don't translate in English. And I also gather feedbacks from these people. I say that. With a few items, the glossary is useless. Why? I don't, there are five terms. On this list, the glossary with the five terms is useless. So we need to take care of the glossary. And also, and this is an important rule, when your community is not very good on translation, probably because it's too much difficult, because the rules are a starting, prime, a starting point in onboarding new volunteers, because it's written here what you have to do. You don't need a mentor, someone to ask, and that way the mentor can do maybe review something else. So have rules, speed up the quality, and the, also the life of the other volunteers, because they can do anonymous. And that way we saw now in Italy, now we see many people that never joined on Slack, but they translate without problem. So because it's documented on our website, because we see that we reject translation. Also. A problem at Glotpress, there is a no official way to uh, suggest, suggest terms. We use it Google Forms and next, and next Make. Also, consistency is important. Glotpress has a tool. No one know, not many people know, but there is a tool. And, uh, and uh, we saw that as an example for the same term, I remember there was a term with diff 12 different translations for Italian. <laughs> and can be a problem because uh, the people cannot understand that it is the same button only with a different term. The cancel sometimes translate in a different way. So it's important to have the same term. That reason the glossary is available too. And also, we need to forget the WordPress 
run on many websites, also business uh, websites. And we can do, we, when we do a wrong translation, we can block their, web, uh, their business. There was uh, the VPML people uh, that we say that uh, when uh, WooCommerce 3 is go out, uh, the Italian translation was, uh, wasn't complete. And they reported to WPML that it was broken, the translation. We, well, we, my website is only in English. Uh, the translation is complete, but they take and with other people. So we need to think about, about it, that we are, what we are doing is not an hobby. It's something that for people is important. And also, a translation with, with quality is a better of translation crappy. Because many people say, it's a crap translation, but I can understand. No, it's better, better translation, because many people think that I can understand that it's something that do something, but it's better to understand what it's doing. So, so what we can learn, that consistency and rules simplify your community. Very simple, our rules. But, and also improve the quality, because a project that is translated good, people appreciate that, and they promote for you. A project that is not followed by the community will dead. So, the, it seems stupid, but the life of the project also in the localization. So why you need a glossary? Well, mentors can work on rules after the glossary. When the glossary is done, because the term, after all, will end, so we can do other stuff. We can create rules. And the results are a good way to see how much is healthy the community, because a community with rules means that community can take care of what we are doing. Is, there is no cowboy that say, I translate as I want. No, you have to follow the community. And also, the people want to join the community because they want probably, maybe I see these rules is not okay for me. I want to discuss, I want to improve. So it's better to have this kind of stuff because uh, you can see how much can grow your community. Simplify the onboarding. People doesn't know to ask you how it works. Involve new volunteers in the community life for that reason, because they can join the discussion. They are not, they are not a, can, a consumer of your rules, because they can create the rules. Simplify the review process, because when we have, like in Italy, we had now, I saw this morning, like 50,000 of strings to review. I know with the rules that I can, today I rejected in, in 15 minutes, I approved 20, 20, uh, 250 strings in 15 minutes, because there was okay, they're following the glossary, there was no wrong term. So in that way, we can simplify the process and we can do other stuff, as an example. And this is a, um, a quote. We have the problem because a language can, be, can have different si uh, synonyms to choose. So I have a glossary, it can simplify my life because I know that cancel is not can uh, cancella in Italian, it's uh, a nulla. And people translate it the wrong way because they say, oh, it's similar. It's a, fa it's a false friend. So we need to help our volunteers to simplify their life. And also, there is GTA that have to approve the translation for WordPress. They say that I can rely only on a closed glossary because I know these are rules I have to follow. So I know that my job is good because I have the rules. And also define the translation style because we have 10,000 Translator, the style, the text, the quality can be different. What we rules will be the same. The, the labels, the string cannot change so much. So I created this tool. Um, this tool is Glottict. It's a browser extension for Firefox and Chrome. For people that use Firefox, I have Firefox sticker. For people that don't use it, we have a reason to switch to Firefox. And uh, it's a simple browser extension I uh, find the right one. No. Uh -huh. Yes, you can find on I am for Firefox and also for Chrome. In uh, in an near north, I released 35 release of the extension. So I fo I follow so much the extension. There is someone that do the icon as an example uh, because there are volunteers that help me. And there is also for Chrome. And now I have 30. Uh, 330 users between Firefox and Chrome. And I support all the glossary that they say. So now support 36 languages, uh, locals, already. So this tool is on GitHub. And I have people that report me problems, so guess your feature. 
hey, people that say the, the, the plugin is not, the extension is not working, they can create a GitHub issues. Sometimes I release uh, a fix it in uh, one hour and new version. So I follow very also Slack people that have problem. So you are not alone using this tool because it's important that we keep uh, the quality. And there is also uh, not only we will see odd case to simplify, but that's a feature. We have the glossary that is updated every day. There are other stuff that I now will show you. I think that, uh, ah, okay. This is when you install the extension on your browser. This is translate WordPress, okay? Okay. And you can now set the language here, very easy. Is, uh, as you can see, there are different locals because they publish they officially their grocery. So I have uh, added the support of me. So now you will see the update of the, the date of the last of the, the glossary. And I will show you. This is uh, uh, when you have the blue here, here you have your term in your language. As you can see, this is the link term explained in Italian because it's explained in the glossary. Uh, Glotpress don't do this. You can have a glossary, but you have the support for your locals. And Glotpress do it for you. And when you have this, there is the glossary. So the people say, wow, wow, how? In this uh, huge list, all of them have a glossary. So for me, it's simple because with a click, I can arrive here. But there are also many odd cases here. You have settings. There is a button here. You have a reminder for a final stop, a reminder of all the hot key. And uh, I love so much this because in this page, uh, I can check all the languages. But is uh, a huge list. Where is my local? Yeah, I moved it here. The, I had the little features that I need to keep and follow is evolving. The, the, quality, the quality of the job. But I added also a little feature. As an example here, I want to go to the consistency. I added the link. I want to know link. I was translating my locals. I click here. I go to the consistency tool if internet is working. Or I can do this. With a click, I can have the term in my language with a click, with the mouse, with the right. I can see link is translated in all the same, in four different ways, the same term. So this is important to keep, to check what is happening. Ah, we, we need to fix this. And uh, this is a browser extension that do anything automatically for you and is explained in the Redmi. Or in case I'm a Slack for anything, I reply in a day. I am the remind, true example of people that is happy on translating. This happened after a meetup. People that is happy on translating. And when we see this, you win. Because it's important. My job is not useless. People love what I've done. And uh, this is people that say that it's very easy now to translate because it's after later. People is, I can translate too much without check it. So you can find here all the results officially of the survey in a spreadsheet. You can find an example of guide started for Mozilla Italia. And now we are translating in English of rules of a project. But uh, here. It's everything. So people, for question, I'm here. And I think that's yeah. per perfect. So I'm here for question. In case I can show how works better, the extension. Uh, uh, there are also some example. I, I don't remember all the hot key. And I made it, but OK. Uh, the reason I added that list because I don't forget. And uh, I saw that as an example, this is a very common error that we reject this translation because people forget to add uh, a stop, uh, a dot at the end of the phrase. For us, it's wrong. So we reject. In that way, we can have a validation inside the browser. Grot press dot do it. OK, my extension do for you. So you can have alert. Also, I added support for Japanese. Uh, different symbols, etc. So it's important also to check there is also this kind of problem. And this happens only in your browser. You have, when uh, your community starts to update, your glossary will be automatically on your browser. So people will really, you add new term automatically every day, the extension, update the glossary. I had a new locals. We, you don't need to update the extension because every day they will be in your browser. So uh, it's uh, happening automatically for you. And uh, there are, I think, they're not. 
because I think it, ah, I am not logged. Okay, I have the other browsers here. No, ah, no, they said the report this bug because I added as an example uh, I saw those two like Transifex I can switch to a thermostone order with page up, page down. Not working, I have to uh, fix it. But there are many, many reasons that you need to work on your glossary because GlotPress reminds you to create a glossary. So check it. It's important to improve the quality of your community because now, with, with improving the localization, our community uh, duplicated on Slack. We are now 500 people on Slack, over. We're improving the quality, the quality of translation and improving also the speed up of review because uh, at the last year we had like 80,000 strings. Now I'm trying to keep the number under 40,000. And when you see a translator that is waiting the approval of the translation, like six months, is too much. So it's important that you have the rules to follow. So this is uh, it's important to track this page to see the status of translation because uh, we see I remember that the time ET was like in this position, now is that. And probably at the end of the day, I will switch under here because there are no rules, I reject approved string very easily. So it's important to track this one because community, uh, someone that care or language, see the tool is not translated, probably they will not use the project. So it's important to keep uh, an eye on this one. And uh, okay, uh, I don't forget you can reach me on the official WordPress Slack and you can find me. There is the project on GitHub, is, there is the link. I can, I uh, released 36 releases in one year and a half of this tool. And uh, in Firefox it's better because uh, it's more fast. And I cannot do on anything for Chrome, but in Firefox it's more fast. So it's your choice. <laughs> okay, uh, I think we can close. Uh, I have one. Yes. I'm from Portugal and we have... Uh, yeah, I support uh, Portugal, also for Brazilian. Uh, we, we, yes, we have Portuguese from Portugal and Portuguese from yeah. Brazil. Besides that, we have all other problems because we have... Yes. We are discussing a new agreement on Portuguese language. Ah, so okay. From Portugal, from Portugal, there are two Portuguese. Ah, okay. But let's, let's have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I support both. Yes, we will... We show there as PT from Portugal. But the question is, how do you make a, cons a consensus on your community? On okay. On, on one, one simple uh, type of uh, words. There's city names and uh, okay. uh, countries. Because sometimes you, you, you call Italy as Italia. In yes. Portugal. But there are some cities that we use the, the their native name, name the, the, the native name or the English name. Yeah, this is a problem that also we approach that. We usually see how they are using on Wikipedia. These are the most simple, so that's another project. We saw Wikipedia in our language translate as an example. There is uh, uh, Island Christmas is not translated in Italian. It says those only Isola Christmas. The name may remain in English because it will be no sense to translate in Italian because it's Christmas. But it depends because there are countries, as an example, Ivory Coast, they have the name is in, in term France. So you can find often it is remain in English, in English or in France. Depends, we use their often uh, Wikipedia as a reference because it's the most used and uh, and will be the best way because often it's explained also how to translate in their incipit, how to translate the country or also the same problem with the currency because they can have uh, their own terms. So uh, Wikipedia is our reference that case. Translate, work, uh, translate Google is not the best no, option, okay. no. <laughs> Anyone has another question? I think that everybody is thinking about lunch. No, yeah. So, Thanks a lot. Bon appétit. <laughs> <laughs>